ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Ayuhal Muslimun, we have entered into the month, the month of Al Muharram, and uh, this month it has a number of legislative rulings related to it, and likewise great virtues. And from that is that the month of Al Muharram and Ashur Al Hurum, from the sacred months that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He has mentioned in His book, فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم. So therefore, do not oppress your own souls in these months. And no doubt oppressing the soul, oppressing the soul with actions of disobedience and transgressing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something major. It's something major in every time and every month. But in the months that are sacred with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the actions of sin and disobedience and transgression, they are more severe. So therefore a believer should be aware of the time and the days that he is in. And these are the sacred days from the sacred months. So therefore, to be cautious of the sins and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a greater obligation. It has been connected by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Afdalu siyami ba'da Ramadan shahrullahi al-muharram that the most virtuous fast after Ramadan is the fast of the month of Allah, Al-Muharram. So likewise, from the rulings of this month and from the actions that are legislated and recommended is to increase in fasting. To increase in fasting the non-obligatory fast. To fast as much as one can, as much as one is able in this month, the month of Allah, Al-Muharram. The month that we are in now is legislated from the good deeds and from the means to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting on Monday and fasting on Thursday. Fasting on the white days, the days of the 13th and the 14th and the 15th. Fasting two, three, four, five or more days in a row and then breaking the fast for one or two days. And then fasting again. Whatever is easy for a believer, he would increase in this month. He will increase in this month fasting. Fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his reward. And seeking his reward. But with regards to the most virtuous day to fast in this month, it is this day of ours. It is today, the day of Ashura, which is the 10th of Al-Muharram, the 10th of this month, and has been connected by Imam Muslim from the hadith of Abi Qatadata radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked about fasting this day, the day of Ashura, and he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, siyamu yawmi Ashura, ahtasibu ala Allah, an yukafira sanata allati qablahu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that fasting on the day of Ashura, fasting on the 10th of Muharram, I hope from Allah that he will expiate by way of that fast the sins of the year that has preceded. 
So this is a great opportunity for a believer, fasting this day, to remember to fast for the sake of Allah. Many of us, or almost all of us, are probably fasting. But to remember to fast for the sake of Allah, seeking the reward from Allah, believing in the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and that is legislated in a means to draw near to Allah. And likewise, preserving the fast, maintaining the fast, fasting from the food and the drink, and the relations, and likewise, fasting with the eyes, and fasting with the ears, and fasting with a person's manners, and etiquettes and how he's moving and going throughout the day avoiding the sins especially on this day while he's fasting especially in this month that is sacred and also avoiding anything else that would invalidate the fast or corrupt the fast or weaken the reward of the fast hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this day fasting on this day is a means to expiate the sins of the previous year such a great opportunity from the mercy of Allah for those believing slaves fasting one day an opportunity to fast one day and all of the sins of the previous year have been forgiven. But what should be taken to note with regards to this affair, the people of knowledge, they have clarified that what is intended and Allah knows best with regards to the sins that are expiated by this fast. And likewise, by the other righteous actions and deeds, they are the minor sins and not the major sins. Rather than major sins, they will not be expiated except with making sincere repentance and tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The major sins, nothing will expiate them except for truly, except for truly repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will be by leaving off the sin entirety and turning away from that and recognizing that a person he has transgressed the limits and violated this affair. And then he will have remorse and he will turn repentant to Allah azza wa jal, begging him to forgive him and begging for his repentance and begging for pardon. Begging Begging for the pardon of Allah Azza wa Jal and seeking forgiveness and likewise having strong determination to never return to the sin again. In this manner, those major sins can be expiated. In this manner, those major sins, they will be forgiven. And it has been collected by Ibn Majah from the Hadith Ibn Masur radiallahu anhu that he said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَتَائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهُ that the one who sincerely and truly repents to Allah Azza wa Jal in the manner that has proceeded, أَتَّائِبُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ كَمَنْ لَا ذَنْبَ لَهُ He is like the one who has absolutely no sin, meaning that his soul will be purified and will be cleansed by repenting to Allah. By turning to Allah and having remorse, by realizing the majesty of Allah and the greatness of Allah and the favor of Allah and the blessing of Allah and believing in the limits of Allah and the halal and the haram of Allah and the obligations of Allah and that which is impermissible, recognizing that the slave had a shortcoming and violated that and then repenting to Allah. This is from the greatest of deeds. This is from the greatest of deeds consisting of the true tawheed, purifying the belief in the creed for Allah, repenting and turning to Allah and recognizing likewise a person's sin, Recognizing likewise a person's sin and his deficiency and weakness and repenting to Allah and calling on Allah for forgiveness and hoping, hoping for his mercy and hoping for his favor. Such a great accident and a great deed in this manner, all of the sins will be forgiven. In this manner, all of the sins can be forgiven, the minor sins and the major, and the major sins. So likewise, with regards to this fast, a person in this day, in this month, he's fasting and he's in that great state, in that great time. So it's a great opportunity to take advantage and to repent and to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal, to make sense sincere tawbah, to reflect over one's sins, to reflect over one's past, to reflect over one's shortcomings, to, to reflect over how one has neglected the obligations or perpetrated the prohibitions, to reflect over how one has used the favors and the bounties and blessings of Allah to disobey Him. And this is the case of every person. And we are all sinners and we all fall short. But the best of us are those who remember Allah and remember their sins and repent. And it has been connected by Ibn Majid from the Hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Kulu bani Adam khatta. All of the children of Adam, they are sinners. They make sins often. And the best of those who sin are those who repent. And indeed, Allah, He loves. He loves those who repent to Him. He loves those who purify their souls with repentance. Returning to Allah Azza wa Jal and seeking forgiveness and calling on Allah in humbleness and recognizing their own deficiency and their weakness and recognizing their need for Allah Azza wa Jal and His great bounty and favor. And likewise, Allah, He loves those who purify their bodies as well. So therefore, a believer, he will strive in this day, if he's fasting, to continue, to continue that fast and to perfect that fast and to perform it for the sake of Allah and to, re 
repent from his sins and to seek the mercy and the pleasure of Allah and hope that his past will be forgiven. Thus, that which is coming from the days to proceed is a new opportunity for a believer, a new opportunity to rectify his affair in his relationship with Allah and to go straight and to be upright. This is a great chance, a great opportunity from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the season of mercy, the season of forgiveness, and the season of bounty and favor continues. And the opportunity to repent to Allah Azza wa Jalla continues so long as the person he does not die, so long as the soul does not reach the throat. And this is the life of a believer. The life of a, be of a believer is in this manner, recognizing the favor of Allah and the bounty of Allah and striving to show thanks, all the while recognizing his shortcomings and his sins and weaknesses and repenting to Allah and seeking his aid and help to go straight. أَقُولُوا مَا تَسْمَعُونَ أَسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Astaghfirullah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد with regards to this fast, the fast of Ashura, then this is the day that is hoped for. And this is the day that uh, the one who fasted, then his sins will be forgiven. The reward is based upon fasting this day. But the Prophet ﷺ in the end of his life, he had hoped to fast the day before. He had hoped to fast the day before in order to be different with the Jews. And it is reported authentically from the Prophet ﷺ from the hadith of Ibn Abbas عنهما, that he said ﷺ, that if I live until the next year, then indeed I will fast the ninth. Then indeed I will fast the ninth, meaning the ninth along with the tenth. So therefore the people of knowledge they have mentioned with regards to the fast of Ashura, the best manner to fast, the best and most virtuous manner to fast is to fast the ninth and the tenth, which would have been yesterday and today which would have been yesterday and today. But likewise, if a person is not able to fast yesterday and today, then as well he can still catch this sunnah in being uh, contrary to the Jews, and that is by fasting today and tomorrow. By fasting today and tomorrow, the day of Ashura and the day after that, likewise, in contradiction, because the Jews, they used to fast only on the day of Ashura, on the day of Ashura. But the people of knowledge, they mention likewise, clarifying the details of this affair, that even if a person, he were to fast only on the day of Ashura, it is allowed and permissible for him and it is not disliked. And this is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did. So therefore, with regards to this fast, the best way to fast is to fast the day before and the day of Ashura, the ninth and the 10th of and Muharram. And after that is to fast the 10th and then the 11th, likewise along with that of and Muharram. And then after that, that which is most virtuous and best is to fast the Ashura alone, is to fast Ashura alone. And all of this is allowed and permissible. And all of this is allowed and permissible. It has been uh, collected authentically by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, likewise from the hadith of Ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhuma, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarified and he affirmed the reason for this fast. The reason for the fast of Ashura, and that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anja Musa wa qawmahu fi hadar yawm al-azim. That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had saved Musa. He had saved Musa and his people from Fir'aun. وَغَرَّكَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَقَوْمَهُ فِي هَذَا الْيَوْمِ الْعَظِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this great day. Ashura in reality is the great day. The tenth of a Muharram is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he saved Musa. He saved Musa and his people from Fir'aun and he drowned Fir'aun and his people in that manner. The great miracle that was given to Musa alayhi salam whenever he fled with Bani Israel. He fled with them and he, and he ran with them and they're fleeing for their lives. And they come to the sea and Fir'aun is behind them. And then at this time, uh, many of them, they become scared and they become afraid and very nervous. And Musa alayhi salam, he stood firm and he said, no, indeed, my Lord is with me and he will help me and aid me. And the revelation came and he struck his staff in the manner that has been narrated to us and the sea is split in half and the believers they crossed and they were saved and then right after that the disbelievers Fir'aun and his army they entered and uh, once they all entered into the sea at this time they were drowned and it engulfed them and uh, the believers they were given a great victory so in this manner the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would fast this day shukran lillahi azza wa jal shukran lillahi azza wa jal showing thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for saving Musa and likewise saving the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in reality the same manner 
In the same manner, Allah, He saved all of the prophets and messengers. All of the prophets and messengers, they were challenged. They were challenged with great challenges and they faced great harms and dangers from their people. But in the end, the outcome was for them. al aqibatu lil muttaqeen And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He saved them and those who followed them and believed in them. And Allah, He mentions about this affair, وَكَذَلِكَ nunji al mu'minin, And in the same manner, and in the same manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He saves the believers. So therefore, the one who puts his faith and trust in Allah azza wa jal in the face of hardship and difficulty, in the face of trials and dangers, and he takes the legislated and lawful means likewise, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him as well by having sincere faith and moving properly according to the legislation of Allah and the law and the deen of Allah. This is from the greatest means to have safety and savior in this life and the hereafter. So fasting this day is in order to show thanks to Allah. And this is what is legislated on this day. And these are the actions that are legislated in this month, fasting. Fasting in the month of Muharram, the non-obligatory fast is lawful and legislated and from the means to draw near to Allah. Fasting on the day of Ashura is lawful and legislated and from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from the means to draw near to Allah. As for taking this day as an Eid and taking this day as a celebration and dressing up for the day of Ashura and the likes and making food and, uh, and giving charity and so on and so forth and having special items and, and gifts that one will have and special types of food that one will prepare on this day, then this is all innovation and falsehood. Then this is all innovation and falsehood and there's no legislation or law for that. And there's no evidence or proof for that. And there's no authority for that in the Quran nor in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So to be aware of that and to beware from falling into this affair. And if anyone were to try to present to a believer on this day some particular candy or some particular type of food and the likes like this, celebrating the day of Ashura, then it will not be accepted, rather it will be rejected. And likewise, their action and deed, if they had thought that that would bring them near to Allah, will be rejected and not accepted. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa rad. That whoever does a deed that's not in accordance to our deen, not in accordance to our affair, meaning not in accordance to our deen, to our law, and to our way, then it will be rejected. This celebration on the day of Ashura in this manner, it is not from the deen of Allah, and it's not from the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fahuwa rad. So therefore it will be rejected. So to be aware of these affairs, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal, and to take advantage of this season in the manner that is lawful and legislated, in the, in the manner that is prescribed in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His way is the correct way. The way of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the way that is pleasing and that leads to the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal in His paradise. All of the other ways, they are ways of falsehood and they lead to the anger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala even if the people decorate them or encourage them in the likes. So likewise, on this day, there is another group of people as well and they're not celebrating rather they are grieving and they are waiting and likewise this is all falsehood and likewise this is all falsehood waiting and grieving and crying out on this day likewise it's all falsehood like the way of the Shia this is this is all falsehood and in the year 61 after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the noble grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu anhumma he was murdered on this day he was murdered on this day by the decree of Allah azza wa jal so some of the people of desires and whims and the people of falsehood they have taken this day as a day of mourning mourning over the death of Al-Husayn radiallahu anhu and this is all falsehood and not legislated and not lawful and they go to great extremes in these days beating their backs and beating their faces sometimes they'll beat their own face and their own head with a sword like fools and idiots billah, that a person would allow somebody else to hit him with a sword or hit him with a whip or hit him with a hand is from the most foolish of affairs so how about the one who takes the sword and hits his own head with it this is from the most ignorant and the most foolish of affairs and worse than all of that and more disgusting and filthy than all of that is that they ascribe it to the deen of Allah and they ascribe it to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa hum kathabun wa islamu bara'u minhum and Islam is free from them in their way and Islam is free from them in their way this is not the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is not the way of Al Islam this is not the way of Al Islam wailing and beating and the likes like this this is all falsehood rather the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that. Rather the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that and he said that this is from the ways of al-jahiliyyah and it has been collected by al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said laysa minna laysa minna man darab al-khudud wa shaq al-juyub wa da'a bi da'u al-jahiliyyah he's not from us he's not from us the one who slaps his own face 
and the one who rips apart his clothing, and the one who calls with the call of Jahiliyyah. And from the call of Jahiliyyah is wailing, and niyaha, wailing over the dead. This hadith is specifically about times of calamities and hardships. Whenever a calamity befalls, the death of a loved one from the ways of Jahiliyyah is one of them, he will slap his own face, especially the women from them, will slap their own face and rip their thobe apart, and the life like is tearing their clothes out of anger and out of distress and out of worry and out of sadness and out of grief, they would lose their mind. They would lose their mind and beat their own face and they would rip off their clothing and they would wail and they would wail and they would wail calling on the name of the deceased. The Prophet wasallam he said about the one who does this, Laysa minna. Laysa minna. And this is exactly what they're doing. And even worse than that, they're calling along with uh, on the dead, calling on Al-Husayn, you will find them on this day and other than this day, Ya Husayn Al-Madid, Ya Husayn Al-Madid, Ya Fatima Al-Madid, all of this is falsehood from the greatest contradiction and confliction with the deen of Al-Islam, and that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came with. It has been connected likewise in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was asked, Ayyu dhambi akbar indallah, what is the greatest sin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ayyu dhambi akbaru indallah. What is the greatest sin, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Allah? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, And tadu'u wa lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqak, that you call on another along with Allah, and He created you. It is Allah who created you. Al Hussein, he did not create anyone, and neither did Ali nor did Fatima radiallahu anhum, and Al Bedawi, and Al Jailani, and the likes. They did not create anything. Lam yakhluku shay'an, wa hum yukhlaqun. They did not create anything, rather, they are themselves created. The worst sin, the greatest action of disobedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest violation. And tadu'u wa lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqak. That you call on another along with Allah azza wa jal, and He created you. Yani, and He created you. And Allah, He created you. How could you call on another besides Allah? And Allah created you. It is Allah created you and created the one that you're calling on besides Him. The one you are calling on besides Him. He's created by Allah likewise, in need of Allah likewise. This is the greatest and most worst of all affairs. And this is their deen and their way and the base of their religion. So therefore, to be aware of this affair and to know to know and to tell the people likewise, to tell the non-Muslims that this is not from Al-Islam. Because wallahi, whenever the disbelievers, they see people in the street beating their heads with swords, blood everywhere, beating their backs and whipping themselves, they will see what's wrong with these people. If they're told these are the Muslims and this is Al-Islam, the first thing one of them will say that has a sound mind, I never want to be a Muslim. If that's Islam, I will never want to follow that. So are they calling to the deen or are they calling to falsehood? Whether they're running the people away from out Islam. Beating oneself in this manner is not from the deen. Calling on others besides from Allah is not from the deen. Rather, that's from the greatest reasons to take one from out of the deen. To take one outside of the religion. So to be aware of these affairs. To learn the sunnah of the Prophet. To learn the deen of Allah. To have knowledge which is light. To have knowledge which is light, light, that will a person he will be able to see the truth and know it and identify it and love it and follow it. And likewise, light, a person he will be able to see falsehood and evil and know it and identify it and detest it and turn away from it upon insight. This is from the greatest blessing and favor. And the knowledge, it does not come without effort. The Prophet wasallam he said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالْتَعَلُّمْ That knowledge is only by way of learning. So therefore we have to strive to learn. We have to have concern for learning our religion, learning our deen, learning the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a pure heart, with sincere faith, with belief, believing in Allah and believing in the last day, seeking to understand the Qur'an for the sake of Allah, seeking to know the limits in the law that is set in the Qur'an and in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the intention to follow it, believing in Allah, believing that it's good, believing that it's the path that leads to the mercy of Allah. We must stand, we must rise and stop being in ignorance. The greatest problem the Ummah is facing today is ignorance. And much of that is stemming from having a great love and attachment to the worldly life. Having a great love and attachment to the worldly life. This life, it does not last. And that's from the greatest of ignorance. And this leads to more ignorance and more ignorance and more actions that will only disgrace us and not raise us. Until we turn to Allah in repentance and we learn our religion and follow it, seeking His pleasure, at this time we'll have victory. At this time we'll have honor. At this time we'll have respect. And not until then. And not until then. So long as people are beating their backs and claiming that it's Islam. And beating their heads and claiming that it's Islam. And spinning around in the masjid and claiming that it's Islam 
Islam. And so long as people are who, who, who bouncing around in the masjid, claiming that it's Islam, so long as people are going to the graves and begging on them and crying and humbleness in front of them, claiming that this is Islam, well, we're not going to have victory. This is not the way the companions, they had victory. This is not the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had victory. This is not the way Prophet Musa Alaihi Wasallam had victory. This is not the way Allah, He saved them. Rather, He saved them with Tawheed. He saved them with Tawheed wal ittiba' Ittiba' Tawheed, singling out Allah alone for all actions of worship and following the Messenger diligently, truthfully and honestly, inwardly and outwardly. May Allah grant us success. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك لا إله إلا أنت وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم